This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. This is the 911 Talk Podcast, episode 102, recorded Tuesday, August 28th, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Pilot Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. A common request that is often seen in an RFI or an RFP for an enterprise class E911 system is the ability to bridge into the outbound 911 call. Now, the reason behind the request is often based on the desire to supply the 911 call taker with additional information by someone who may be in a position to do so. A common example that's given is a hotel front desk manager. Someone in a particular room dials 911 because of a fire. And because the PBX does not use room-level public telephone numbers, only the main number of the hotel is displayed to the 911 center. The front desk manager is made aware of the call from the room and is able to bridge onto the line and then communicate the specific room number. Although this sounds like a good idea, it is actually one that is quite controversial and brings forward several different opinions from the industry. When the Nina Model MLTS legislation was being finalized a few years ago, this particular point and bridging onto the 911 call became a very hot topic of discussion. While the case could be made that additional information could be conveyed to the 911 call taker, it also opened up the potential for additional audio to be injected into the call. Now the primary concern here became maintaining the pristine audio between the caller and the 911 call taker. 911 call takers are trained on multiple levels. In addition to being an emergency medical dispatch that provides them with the skill set to verbally instruct 911 callers with things such as CPR and childbirth over the telephone, they're also trained to listen for audio cues that may be present on the telephone line. Things like the sound of a struggle in the background, a shotgun cocking, or even the sound of fire can all be very important clues to the situation that is unfolding. Now, looking back at our hotel fire scenario, I was wondering what would actually unfold if the fire alarm panel was also located at the front desk, effectively blocking all audio on the phone call. Another similar request I see is the ability to record the outbound 911 call. When I ask why, the typical response that I get is, so we know exactly what was said and to whom to protect ourselves from liability. Now, since all 911 centers that I know of record and archive all inbound calls for the same reason, I'm not sure why the enterprise would risk any potential interaction with the outbound call other than to be nosy. Now, for those that feel that ambient background noises would never interfere with caller audio, I'd like to give you an example of an incident that occurred just this past week in Vancouver. The homeowner, awoken by his dog barking at quarter after two in the morning, discovered an intruder inside of his house. Now, while the homeowner and his wife were on the phone with 911, the intruder tried to kick down the bedroom door. The story said, the Clark County Sheriff's Office said the level of ambient noise made it hard for the dispatcher to understand what was going on at the house. The dispatcher was typing, the dog was barking, the caller's wife was screaming, and the caller was talking loudly as they told the dispatcher they were hard of hearing. Now here's the most amazing part of the story. The homeowner said that the intruder had charged him and his wife in the bedroom, and he then fired six fatal shots from his handgun. Now although police admitted that normally you can hear the shots, since this was a small 22 caliber handgun and it was quieter than most others, the sound of the shots were lost in the ambient background noise. Now, I listened to a copy of that tape, and even though I knew where to listen, I still was not able to hear those gunshots. Just imagine what else could have been blocked in another situation. Now, of course, you're welcome to listen for yourself, and I'll provide a link to that audio in the written version of my blog. You can find that, as always, at www.avaya.com forward slash Fletcher. So now that you have a better understanding for the potential of having background audio hinder instead of help, I hope you'll think twice before you make it a requirement in your solution. It's just one of those things that sounds like a good idea until you look at the whole scenario from a different perspective. The goal of Enterprise E911 solutions are to provide assistance and additional information to public safety. They're not there trying to do the job that public safety is responsible for doing.
You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, product line manager for emergency services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency? This is the Avaya Podcast Network, APN.